Today we begin to renovate Tatooine Tower, but before that, let me show you what I've been doing this last week. First up, just down here in front of the library, I have given our Fanta and Sprite bottle costume figures, which kind of do represent me and my fiance, a little drink stand, and there is actually a minifigure with a £100 note or a $100 bill spending, well, a lot of money on a drinks order. Perhaps there's some limited edition cans. And then we go all the way over to the Friends Tower here, where if I remove this wall that we worked on last week, all these walls are now removable and the Friends Tower looks a lot better than just having a random tan wall there. You can see the fridge is no longer in the way. We have Phoebe's painting, well, most of at least, and the fridge is actually obstructing the door, but I have moved it so that I guess we've just trapped them on the balcony, but we can see inside the block. And that's what really matters. It, it's not really a problem if we can't open the door, but like I said at the start of the video, today's focus is on the very, very blocky Tatooine Tower. And one of the best things about Tatooine Tower is it's fully modular on its own 16 by 16 mils plate. Now, I think I'll have to split this up into two videos. So if you are watching this, I will be working on the top half throughout the week. And I don't think I'll save it till next week's video. I think I'll be doing little bits throughout the week and then I can update. Because I'm not looking at changing Tatooine Tower all that much, just changing the dimension. At the top here, we've got a lot of empty space, but I'm intrigued to see what I'll do next week. As for this week, we'll actually be expanding the Moss Isley Cantina, or technically the Taylor Town Cantina. It only says Cantina up the top there in Orbesh, and I would like to bring that out another eight studs onto the pavement in front. And that means we are gonna have to take away this wall. I would like to have a wall that can pop off but I'm wondering if I should just build this extension as a doorway here that we can just pop off with the wall, which might work in my favor. So the first thing we had to do was of course, break down another wall. This is gonna be a very common theme here when we're remodeling the city, but it was fairly simple just to crumble it down. The awkward parts are always in the corner where you've got to take off the other part of the wall, try and remember how it goes back. But in this case, it wasn't too much of a problem because I was somewhat rebuilding it, as you see bunch of gaps on the corner and I actually use this time to add a bit more detail into it. I know I used a load of modified pieces and I do go back and refiddle with the top later on. But what this did was free up a few tiles from the roof going across the front, which I'm going to use to tile off the front of the cantina. But we'll get to that in just a second with the walls complete. I have a size of how long I want the entrance to the cantina to be. However, this isn't gonna be the whole front coming out 16 studs. I do wanna style it like the cantina we see in the Star Wars universe with that angle. Here is the close up that I mentioned about the interior. As you see, I'm just moving around a few of the tiles. I've already done it on the left to bring the seats closer to the front because I did cram them in when I first built it and just reposition the seats so there's enough space. I'm not gonna have to cram all the UCS or Master Builders figs in there. And like I said, using some of the spare tiles from the roof and that I pulled out to shimmy around the chairs, I'm able to finish off tiling the front and this will carry over on top of the pavement as will be up to 16 studs further out. And the reason that I've added these snot bricks on since the last time lapse is so that we can fit the front of the cantina on that held with only those four studs or the two snot techniques. And you can see already the front of this cantina is looking much better and we'll just be able to pop it off when it is in the city. But now we need to take a look at the pavement. In fact, I'll probably do this off camera tile, make sure that the floor lines up to the cantina and we'll probably have a little bit of blend because it is quite sandy in the cantina itself. So I'm gonna mess around with that and then we can take a look at this floor in the city and see what changes we need to make for the next one. There was so much time-lapse footage across the hours I spent today working on this and I don't feel like too many of them 
were actually that important. But this is me tiling off the pavement. And I wanted to show you my process because it was quite awkward to do. First, I got an understanding of where the door was and knew that I had to change this four by six plate just so I had a few more studs to connect. Couldn't find a light gray one, but it's gonna be covered. So a dark gray one is good enough. I guess we've got that little bit showing there. And like I said, I don't want it to be smooth. So I've used a round one by one corner just to make it look like the front steps a bit worn down from all the people coming in and out. And I do use a few light bluish gray tiles because I just don't have the amount that I thought I did in tan. But I think it worked really nice. I got to put a few more dark tan one by ones in and just smooth off the surface, even though it won't be seen and then reattach the doorway. So the front of the cantina has been switched up. And I think especially in the city with a squared off tower, a squared off tower, even though Naboo and Coruscant towers are quite different as you go up, they start off with a very square base. So having this little bit poking out at the bottom of the cantina is really, really fun. And I think when we work on the next floor, which I'm afraid will probably be next week. There's a few other things I wanna do in this video. So I'll leave the other three because we're just reducing them. It'll be fairly simple. We'll be doing that next week and hopefully we do get it done. But we're left with a massive space and it's somewhat cornered off the Lego city. So I guess the Lego store sign will have to move. I'll probably move that up to the next floor when we renovate that tower. But for now, I just want to rework the queue and I'll fiddle around with it for quite a bit and I'll come back when it's finished. And now we can take a final look at not only the cantina, but also the Lego queue. We'll start off with the cantina because that was the purpose of today's video. I really like some of the techniques I've used, I like to get the cantina sign in there on the front of this build. But taking it off, we reveal most of the minifigures that once were out the front of the cantina have now been fit inside into the hustle and bustle that is going on. And if my camera can focus a bit steadier, we've got a pirate behind the bar. We do have a little child by an animatronic CMF bear at the back. I'm sure nothing can go wrong there. We've got some drinking buddies, Homer, Jack and Wolverine just at the front here. I've completely forgot Wolverine's actual name. We've got someone serving them coming up and I think it's just great to see all the stories we can get, even when the rest of the tower is complete. We'll still be able to reveal that and take a look at the stories inside. Right now, it's a bit harder to get the top bit on because I don't really have anything to grip. If I hold the top, it tends to just push it forward and it's not as secure as I'd like. So I might try and workshop something there. But if we move over to the Lego queue, I've actually got some railings, not that you can see it, in between some of these mini figures. I'm not sure it's light enough for you to see, but there's a few bar elements in between separating the queue. And I've just packed it in a lot more, which frees up a lot of the street. And I think this is looking really cool. We can definitely add, I don't know really what, maybe we can move the drink stand over into the front of the pub. I'm not sure what the owners will have to say about it, but I think that could work quite well and what we could even do is move this directly in front and rather than the two costumes hanging out behind we'll move them forward a little bit i don't want to obstruct the actual cantina front and i want to make sure we can still open it but as you can see there's a little gap in there and then we can add the figures just here selling drinks perhaps this is some promotion going on with the cantina itself. We've got someone walking in, a few minifigures walking past, and I guess this person is eager to buy some of that special beverage. But I'm really happy with the work that we are doing on the city. Let me get the top of Tatooine Tower back. That's better. It feels a bit more complete now, but I'm liking how Tatooine Tower is shaping up. I want to do a similar thing with the Lego store. Not quite sure the shape of it yet, but there will be something. And the bottom of the Lego store won't be removable because we've got the balcony. I might reduce the balcony just a little bit backwards and have this top two thirds pull out instead. So that's going to look really cool. Definitely check out last week's city update if you want to see more about the removable walls we are adding to the city. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video on my minifigure scale AAT. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Make sure you've dropped a like before you watch the next one and may the bricks be with you 
always.